Assalamu alaikum and salam sejahtera to all. So for today, we are going to start with our first chapter, Introductions to Organic Chemistry. Okay, for the first part, it is a lesson outcome. So by the end of the chapter, you should be able to explain the characteristic features of uh, organic compounds. Means that you must be able to identify whether this compound uh, is an organic compound or not. So the second one is to write a chemical formula using a uh, full structural formula or condensed structural formula or even using the skeletal formula. Alright, the third uh, outcomes, you must be able to define hydrocarbons, isomer, electrophile, nucleophile, Lewis base or Lewis acid. Next, you, are, you must be able to differentiate the type of isomerism, including structural isomer, geometrical isomer, and also optical isomer. Besides that, you must be able to identify the functional group, such as carbon-carbon single bond, carbon-carbon double bond, and also the homolog series, for example, alkene, alkene, alkyne, alcohol, and so on. And last but not least is the physical properties. You must be able to identify the solubility of organic compound and also the boiling point of organic compound. So for boiling point, basically, it involves um, comparison of two compounds or three compounds, and you have to identify which compound will have a higher or lower boiling point. Okay. So for the next one is a lot lesson outline. So this is basically what we, what we will cover in this chapter. So for the introduction, in chemistry is a study of carbon containing compound, whether in living organism or non living organism. Living organisms such as human, we are consist of so many organic compound. Even um our skin layer, the fat is or consists of carbon compounds. For the non-living, such as our fuel, all right, the fossil fuel that we get for our car fuel and something like that, right? So, next, this is the characteristic features of organic compounds. So, we will focus on carbon. Okay, why carbon? Because carbon consists uh, in all organic compounds. So, the atomic number is six. So, this is the valence, uh, sorry, the electronic configurations for carbon. So, the valence electron is 4, 2s2, 2p2, so 4 electrons. So, 4 electron valence, meaning that carbon will need another 4 bonding to achieve its octet. Carbon achieves its octets, so mean that carbon has the most stable state. Okay, so for the second one is ability to catenate. Okay, catenate means that the catenation process that all of you know about polymer. Okay, the water bottle that you use is consists of polymer. So every polymer is actually made up from a basic unique we call as monomer. So polymer are uh, produced by a repetition unit of monomer. So somehow the monomer will repeat itself for 40 uh, times, for 30 times, or even 50 times to form a polymer. So this compound must have a very stable bonding because it will easily break down. So carbon is one of the stable compounds that can be used in making the polymer. Alright, and the last one. Um, the ability of carbon to form a multiple bond. So carbon are able to form single bond, double bond, or even a triple bond. So this is carbon single bond, and then this is carbon triple double bond, and this one is a carbon triple bond. So not all compound can form multiple bonding like carbon. Okay. So next is a valence bond theory. Okay, so I believe that all of you already learned on the VBT. Okay, so it's actually on this chapter. Okay, it will touch on the covalent bondings from when two atoms are approached each other. So actually, the VBT theory explain on the overlapping of orbitals. 
okay, uh, involve the valence electrons, right? So this is an example. So when you have a sigma bond, the two orbital will overlap, sorry, and to and okay, hujung dengan hujung. So if you have a pi bonding, so the pi orbital will overlap side by side. Okay, tepi dengan tepi. One macam ni. Okay, so you will have one, two spin. The other one is just like this. Compound A, compound B, interactions. Okay, so this is pi bonding. This is your sigma bond. So, okay, basically if you look at these pictures, okay, this one, you can see that the sigma bond has a greater strength as compared to pi bond because the sigma bond is a overla overlapping sorry overlapping of electron okay this one is a side by side interaction so meaning that if you have a reactions that consists okay for example okay that consists a double bond okay this is double bond and also a single bond so your reaction site will be your double bond why because double bond is weaker as compared to sigma so means that double bond is easily to break down as compared to sigma so because of that the reaction site uh, will occur or the reaction site will be determined by the unsaturated bonding so unsaturated bonding is your double bond okay so next is a chemical formula so for the chemical formula we have a general formula and we also have the structural formula so what is a general formula for example the general formula is cn h2n plus 2 so any compound that obey to this formula so it will classify as alkene for example i give you a structure okay ch3 ch2 ch3 okay so carbon numbers one two three so kita guna rumus sekat atas ni so three k h two k plus two so it's supposed to be C3H8. Alright. And then we try to calculate. So, 3 carbon plus with 2 carbon is 5 carbon. 5 plus 3, you are going to put 8 carbon. So, this compound obey to this general formula. So, it means that this compound is an alkene. So, that one is a general formula. Okay. And the what is molecular formula? This is the molecular formula. Simplify. Okay. From this structure, you simplify the number of carbon, the number of hydrogen that uh, exists in this structure. So, for example, another example, if you have uh, this compound. Okay. For example. Okay. So. The molecular formula is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So C5, 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 3. So you add the H10 and then you have 1 oxygen. So this is your molecular formula. What is empirical formula? Empirical formula is the simplest molecular formula. So I give you another example, such as you have this compound, okay, for H10 is uh, a molecular formula. So the simplest one, you can divide by 2, so you can get C2H5. So this one is the empirical formula, okay. So next, we go to structural formula. So what is structural formula? Okay. For example, I give you a compound, alright, so C2H6, for example. So, K 
Okay, how you want to predict this compound? You can predict from general formula. So, for example, yang tadi CNH2N plus 2. So, you try masukkan. Okay, kalau dia ada 2 carbon, so and then you ada 2 plus ni. So, you akan dapat C2H6. So, means that this is an alkene. So, all bonding are single bond. So, ingat yang tadi, I dah cakap, carbon mesti ada 4 bonding. So, you kena lengkapkan. So, and then, 3 hydrogens. Kenapa I put 3 hydrogens? Because each carbon must achieve its octet. So, this is the structure. Okay. So, 2 carbon. Okay. 2 carbon. And then, 6 hydrogen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6 hydrogens. So, the structure that you come up, okay, this one we call as expanded structure. Okay. Why expanded? Okay. Because you expand everything. Okay. Each of the bonding, you expand. Okay. You show the bonding. Even for OH pun, you show the bonding. So, normally we write OH just like this. But if for expanded structure, you must expand. So that we can see the bonding of oxygen and the hydrogen. Okay. So for the next one, we have condensed structure. Okay. For structural formula, we have expanded, condensed and skeletal. Okay. So how? The condensed structure. So this one is the expanded atas ni. So uh, condensed, you tutup all the bonding. You just calculate how many atoms that is bonded to your carbon. Okay, for example, for this one, three hydrogens is bonded to one carbon. So CH3. You condense can they? Okay, you tutup all the bondings. And for the next one, you have another carbon. Bonding dengan another three hydrogens. So this one is condensed. Okay. So how about uh, skeletal? Skeletal is the easiest one. So how? You add the proper carbon? One, two. So every end is one carbon. So two carbons. This one is a skeletal. Okay. Hujung satu carbon, hujung lagi dua carbon. Skeletal structure, dia hide the carbon and the hydrogens only. So, for example, you have CH3, CH2, OH. Okay, so one, two, two carbon. Okay, so one, two. OH kita tak sorok. So, you have to put another bonding and then you have to put a label OH. Okay, so this one means that CH3, CH2, OH. Okay, another example I give you. CH2, double bond, CH, CH3, sorry, CH2, OH. So, sama juga, 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3, ada OH, tarik lagi 1, letak OH. And then you have double bond. So, you have to put here your double point. Carbon and hydrogens, you can also rock can. An example from skeletal to condense. Okay, first one you have to work, uh, do is uh, you label can. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6. Alright, and then you have to calculate the number of hydrogen for each carbon. So, back in your mind, carbon must be either 4 bonding. So, carbon 1 dengan carbon 2, okay, carbon 1 cuma ada satu saja bonding, okay, carbon 1. So, 4 tolak 1, so meaning that dekat carbon pertama, you akan ada 3 hydrogen. So, carbon kedua, you kira 1, 2, 3. Okay, 4 tolak 3, maksudnya you ada 1 hydrogen. So, and then, carbon ketiga, 1, 2, 3. 4 tolak 3, ni 1 hydrogen. And then, last kali, you dapat macam ni. So, untuk carbon kelima, you ada double bond dengan O. Jangan lupa. Tak perlu letak sebab heteroatoms.